everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a very extreme Santa sleigh. It has the red sleigh with the golden sleigh runner things and then it has a Christmas tree in it and then a big bag of gifts. If you like this extreme sleigh idea, I have one that is even crazier from last year that is the Grinch sleigh. I really like both of them. This one is a much more elegant execution than the Grinch one that was definitely Grinch susical style. I hope you like it and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So we are going to begin, not with the nail like I usually do, but this time I'm going to start by showing you the template for the sleigh. Doodle it, doodle it however you want. Um, just make sure that after you have it drawn, it's in a nice bold ink so that you can clearly see it once you lay your nail form backing on top. Draw the side of the sleigh, and then you're going to also wanna draw that, I called it a sleigh runner, I'm just gonna stick with that. Draw that bottom skate part of it. And after you have both of those pieces done, and as also the other thing to remember is that when you're drawing this, use a piece of paper that your pen will run through so that you can flip the paper over and see it on the other side as well. So just go over all of your little drawings a couple times, make sure that that ink goes through nicely. Lay a nail firm backing over the top of it, and then you're going to take red acrylic or whatever color you want your sleigh to be and start sculpting the sides. Don't sculpt the bottom part of it, just do the area of it that is the red, so like the, the body, the body of the sleigh. Take that red, curve it up and around. At this point, don't worry about those curly cues either. That will be done in gold. I just wanted to get them in place and it really helps to, for me, it helps to have all of the little parts drawn in so that I get an idea of really how they're going to look at the end, even if I'm not sculpting them all right now. I am going to take the gold then and I'm going to add those little curly cues. As you are adding the little curly cues, um, the color of acrylic I'm using is metallic gold, which is absolutely gorgeous. However, it's a discontinued color and I, I haven't really looked because I still have it. I get asked every time I use it um, where it's from, what it is, and um, it is discontinued now, but it is so pretty. However, if you do not have a metallic gold like this, I have seen, I haven't tried it, where people will take gold chrome powder or silver chrome powder and mix it into clear acrylic and get some really pretty colors. That would be something that you could try. I do not know how it would turn out because like I said, I've never personally tried it, but that might be an option. I am now going to sculpt that part, the bottom part of the sleigh, the little sleigh runner skate thing. And I'm going to use my gold acrylic for all of that as well. Whatever color acrylic you do choose to sculpt these pieces with, make sure it is one that you can, that you know you have experience with and you have good control over it because you're making a lot of little lines. And if it is one that just does not cooperate, whether it is too thin and it runs a lot, or if it is a drier acrylic and it's a little bit crumbly, if it doesn't like to stretch, if any of those things happen, this is not going to turn out very well because you need an acrylic that you can stretch and pull into these long thin stripes and will accommodate that. So just pick a color that works both for the design and for the execution. And if you don't have one, but you do have a white or a clear acrylic that works well, sculpt all of these pieces with white or clear and then paint them later. That would be the other option that would be a decent substitute. So after I have the two first horizontal pieces done. I'm going to do the vertical ones. There are three three vertical lines that go across and then between the vertical lines I had a curly cue. Those first three, when you're making these first three um, like cubes to do, let those set for a minute after you've sculpted them to allow them to cure before you go back through and try to add the swirls between them. Do something else on your sleigh, like add the little swoops, swoops that are on the other parts like uh, in the front of the sleigh or on the side before you go back and try to mess around where that acrylic is still pliable. I'm going to touch up that one edge with a little bit more red, and then I'm going to lay the bead down to do the first curly cue. As you can see, this color cooperates with me. It allowed me to pull it fairly easily, kind of stayed its, in its spot, kept the lines, and it did create that, that swoop. If yours, if you don't have any color that you know will behave like this, that you'll be able to get that nice little shape with, just skip it. Because if you try to add it in and it doesn't work, you're, it's going to be a frustrating experience. And it's just not, it's a tight area. It's not something that is um, automatically possible with acrylic. It's one of those where you have to have the right recipe of products to get it to just curl in that small little space. You also have to have a small enough brush. And if that's just something that isn't plausible for you, just skip that particular section. Sculpt, flip your paper over, sculpt the same thing in the opposite orientation. And now sculpt the bottom of your sleigh with a red rectangle that you're just kind of eyeballing it for how big the sleigh is. Do the same thing for a rectangle for the back. I would recommend making your sleigh a little wider than I made mine. Mine ended up a little skinny. Um, so just make these rectangles 
a little bit, a little wider than what I did. However, it does work. So after I have them made and I can peel them off, I've got two sides of my sleigh, a bottom and a back. I'm going to glue the bottom onto one piece of sleigh and then I'm going to glue the back on, hold them in place with the nail glue until they start to grab. Once you feel like, yep, these are, these are nicely attached for the time being, you're going to want to get a little bit of glue on their edges. I'm using the help of a toothpick to get the glue in place. Grab your other sleigh side and set that down so that it all lines up the best you can. And then hold that until that, until it's secure enough where you can tip it around and you can move your sleigh and it doesn't fall apart. Grab copious amounts of acrylic and we're going to fill in the rest. You're going to need to sculpt different areas um, for the sleigh that are missing. Like there's going to be gaps here and there where there's, cause this sleigh is a curve. There's curves all over this thing. So there isn't, you can't just make all of these flat pieces and they'll all glue together and it'll fill in the entire thing. You're going to have to get these other little thin areas and pat them into about the right shape and then pick them up. You might have to trim them a little bit too, but then pick them up and then place them where they will fit. For the ones over the back, grab that piece, lay it over those gold curls and then press it down and in. As long as you can pick up your acrylic when it's in that pliable material texture stage, this will work and you'll be able to get them to go in. I did have to trim that one section with my cuticle scissors. Things you're gonna wanna have out before you start this process are a cuticle scissors, um, some kind of presser tool, might be like a silicone tool, um, something to cut the acrylic that is a straight edge. I'm using my little toothpick uh, and your acrylic brushes before you try to get all of these pieces in place. The last one is going to be on the very front of the sleigh, the curve that goes up and around on the front. Same thing, you might need to have that cuticle scissors around nice and close. After you have all of those pieces attached, then take your acrylic again, the red acrylic, and smooth out. These are all separate pieces that you just kind of puzzle piece together. And so there's gaps everywhere and there's uneven spots. So just take more red acrylic, fill them all in, smooth it out. You want this to look smooth and, and luxurious and elegant. So make sure that all of those seams get fixed. Fill in underneath the sleigh, on the inside of the sleigh. The inside isn't nearly as important because there, I am planning to put in a Christmas tree and a present bag. So if that doesn't look completely perfect on the inside, it's not going to be seen necessarily anyway. So on the inside, focus more on things like strength than flawless, pretty smoothness. I, of course, want to fill in all of those gaps on the sides of the sleigh because there's little where the two sides were glued together. There's going to be little gaps that you'll want to fill in for strength purposes but then underneath the slate on the front for that is more for aesthetic cover that all up smooth it out once you have that you may have noticed that some of your gold got covered up slightly here and there especially on those curls on the front and the back if that happened grab more of your gold acrylic and just fix them on the nail tip, I'm going to apply an overlay of a slightly sparkly white acrylic. It just looks icy to me. It's uh, not a super opaque white, and it just has this very soft little glitter bit in it, and it looks beautifully like snow, which I should know. We had a blizzard today, and everywhere I look outside, it is just like this nail color, bright white and sparkly. After that is completely covered, don't worry about it being perfectly smoothed out. Don't file it. Don't worry about any of that. I'm going to grab my sleigh and I'm going to glue it onto the nail. After the glue has grabbed, you're going to grab clear acrylic and you're going to just secure it down. Put a little bit of clear acrylic underneath the sleigh in places where it's touching the nail to make sure that it actually stays where you put it. After just a little bit of that clear acrylic has been applied, you can switch back to your white icy color and just add some snow, some snowy hills, some different places where you can build up a snowy, a snowy texture like it's been drifting. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just nice little snowy, wavy shapes. Back to my little piece of scratch paper. I'm going to draw a very basic tree shape with a nice straight line down the center. Nail form backing on top of said tree shape. And then with a green color acrylic, I'm going to sculpt one tree shape that is the full tree, like I drew. And then I'm going to do four pieces of half trees. So two of each side. So after you have the full tree sculpted and it's, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly like the pictures underneath. That's more for size reference. You could have simply drawn a triangle so that you have the right height and the right increasing width of the boughs. So it doesn't have to be exactly like that, but you know, that gives you just a nice idea. 
you're going to do the left side twice and the right side twice. When you're sculpting all of these pieces, try to bear in mind that you want to keep them on the thin side because they, when they get all glued together, if they're too thick, they won't fit in nice and tight towards the middle because we're making a little 360 tree. And when you're doing that, you just need to make sure that they stay, they stay nice and tight in the middle. So try to keep that center line as thin as you can without making it so that the tree is too delicate to be handled. Now repeat the process for the other half of the tree and then repeat the whole thing where you make two. So you just need one of the full tree, but then four total half tree pieces. After that other one is done, go ahead and let them dry. Apply a thin line of glue down the middle of your tree. Grab one of your half tree sections, place it down into the glue, and then tip it ever so slightly to the side. Add more glue if you need to, add another half tree piece, and then tip it also slightly to the side so that when you look at it, there's a nice little fan of tree boughs. Grab more of that green acrylic you've been using and fill in the very center between all of those pieces so that they are attached and they're not going to go anywhere. And then leave that to the side to dry and to cure until you are happy with it and, or until it's solid. And then flip it over, repeat for the back of the tree. If you need to add a little bit of green acrylic to the very peak of the tree, if it doesn't seem like they all came to a nice tight point in the middle, add a little bit of that green to finish that off. Place your tree into your sleigh. Mine fit in just one specific way because my sleigh was a little bit narrow, as I said. If your sleigh was a little bit wider, you may have more, op more options of how to put your tree in there. But actually, I liked the way my tree was placed, so it worked out. But then I'm just going to attach it to the sleigh with clear acrylic where it touches. On a silicone mat with a bright Christmassy red gel polish, I'm going to paint a circle. Try to keep it very thin. You want to have a lot of flexibility in this gel after it's cured. After you did one coat of gel polish, apply one thin coat of gel top coat. Use a brand that you know is flexible. Madame Glam is fantastic for that. The top coat should be matte, by the way. I'm then going to squeeze a small blob of Acrogel into the center of my gel polish circle, and I'm going to start folding that gel polish around the Acrogel. If you don't have the Acrogel in the middle, it will not hold its shape. You also may find that you need to add a couple little darts on your little Santa bag so that it does close in on itself because it may want to kind of buckle more but if you do add a couple little couple little cuts it will fold up on itself a little bit easier. After you have it and it's nicely tied around itself I'm going to actually set it into the sleigh and allow it to open up a little bit while it cures and I'm going to pop it into the lamp to cure. If you allow it to open up after it's in the sleigh, you know it's going to fit in the sleigh because it will cure in that shape, but it'll also get the light into the bag. Attach a string to the back side with a little bit of jewelry gel, cure that, and then tie it around the bag. Pull and tie, <laughs> it's going to possibly come out of your sleigh. Pull and tie, pull it with all your might, use a nice heavy duty thread if you have one, and then tie it in a knot again so that it doesn't come undone. Pull it as tight as you can get it. Cut off your extra thread. Make sure you have enough thread when you're doing this that you can easily hold it and pull. And then just snip off that extra length. And grab something like a, um, a stud or a little rhinestone to add to the center of the knot to dress it up a little bit. I have a gold half stud I'm going to use. Place that in. I'm gonna just adjust the tops of my bag so it's a little bit, a little more nicely finished. Stick that back into the sleigh. I'm going to attach it into the sleigh with some jewelry gel and just press that down in. Cure that again. And then with jewelry gel, still I'm going to be embellishing my Christmas tree. With some gold chain, I'm going to be placing that down, kind of sticking it down, flash curing it so that it doesn't fall off while I start wrapping the chain around the tree and then go around and around in a circle, going all the way up until I reach the top of the tree, cut off the extra um, the extra chain now that you know how much you need use something a little bit sharper than my old rusty uh, cuticle or fingernail clippers that I use to cut metal and then I'm going to attach it to the very top of the tree with more jewelry gel it does not necessarily want to stay at the very top so you may want to have the help of a tweezers and gravity on your side after you do have that attached and it does seem like it's going to stay Flash cured again so that it does stay for sure. And then grab a little more jewelry gel, add a blob right at the very top, and then grab a star-shaped stud and place that on the peak of the tree. Flash cure it on the side opposite the stud. 
apply more jewelry gel to the side to the side that's opposite the first star stud and add a second one on the back so that the star is on both the front and the back of the tree after that's done you can flash cure it or you can just put the whole thing in your lamp to cure it because at this point it does need a full cure apply some gel sealer over the top of all of these snow and cure that and then selectively apply some gel sealer in little areas so that glitter will stick to just some spots and not others do one side of the nail and then the other sprinkle the glitter on tap it off after it's cured you can dust it turn the nail around apply the same system some gel sealer and little swipes here and there some glitter dust it off after it's all cured, it is all done. I love this one. Like I said, it does remind me of my Grinch sleigh from last year. However, it's a little more elegant and it's not Grinchy. It's definitely a different style. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And I will see you all next time. Bye.